Here's my honest review about Nava Groove. Let's go. Guys, this is actually the first harmonization project to be launched in the year 2024 in the RCR region. For those that are new to the channel, RCR basically means the city fringe area. And the first one was supposed to be Emerald of Katong, which was actually being announced that they're going to launch on 25th of October. However, it's being pushed back to further notice as of the day of recording. The first launch which falls under the GFA harmonization will be none other than Nava Grove, launching on 2nd of November. And today, I'm going to share with you my opinions on this project. So how this video is going to be done is number one i'm going to share with you the project overview in a nutshell the pros and cons of nava growth the floor plans the nava growth exit strategy and last but not least my final thoughts on what you should be doing if you're considering nava growth but before we go on if you like content like this do me a favor by liking this video because it takes me very long to produce and it's going to help me a great deal thank you so much now coming to the project overview let's do a rapid fire version because there's so many other content that's talking about the project overview for more information i'll link that in the description you can go read it yourself but in a nutshell right total 552 units 442 parking lots Estimated vacant possession will be 2028. It's on District 31 and it's a 99 year leasehold property developed by MCL Land and Cinemas Land. So for those that have never been to Ulu Pandan before, as the name suggests, because it's very Ulu, not true because it's actually between Clementi and also Holland. So there's this road called Ulu Pandan Road that is actually in between Clementi and Holland area. So right across us is actually the police training academy that is actually low rise and also across will be the Clementi Forest, which means that Nava Grove actually gives you an unblocked view at the front. And behind us will be the Pine Grove, which has been trying to go for on block for the longest time and an unsuccessful on our right will be Ulu Pandan, the triple nine year leasehold condos that has always been on the off-block market. For that, there's also an eight-story high development. Behind us will be the S-Store Green, which is 16-story high. So for those people who love unblocked views, right, Nava Grove is actually situated on the elevated ground. And what I mean by elevated ground is today when you travel up from Upper Bukit Timah, which is almost like sea level, when you travel up, right, you have to go up a very high slope before you hit Sunset Way. And after you cross Sunset Way, you actually turn left before you see the Nava Grove on your right hand side. So I will approximately say that it's about 10 stories higher than the Bukitima area. Meaning to say that today when you buy the low floor unit, you are as good as being on 15 story high when you are on the upper Bukitima area. So in order to save time for the project facilities, I'll link the ebook in the description for the full information. If you wish to go check out the show flat, this is my number. Now coming to the pros and cons, let's first talk about the pros. It's within 1km from Henry Park Primary School. You're situated on elevated ground as mentioned earlier on. Good commute to town, basically about 12 minutes drive to Orchard Road, even during peak hours because I'm currently staying like right across within the forest with the monkeys. For me to drive from my house to Orchard Road usually takes me about 12 minutes even during peak hours because Holland Road, that area is a very low traffic, low density area. So, an expansion, this area is a low density area, a good layout, efficient and, and for Nava Grove, it's actually designed based on the latest harmonization competition method. So, it is actually very efficiently laid out. Last but not least, this is one of my favorite neighborhoods because of the sheer fact that it's not just affluent but it's very near the nature. And now, the cons. I may be fired by my company for saying all this. Jokes aside, it's not that near MRT station. Basically, about 15 minutes walk. Not many amenities around the area unless if you wish to drive. You have some amenities in the Pandan Valley area but actually not really that much. They don't have one-to-one -one car park which makes me scratch my head because it's not so near the MRT station. Most people that stay there might be driving. Surrounded by few properties which as a 99 yearly so may be dampening factor when you try to exit. And last but not least, the sizes of the floor plans are a little bit big for an investment property. By now, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, only 20% of you are being subscribed to this channel. I mean, enough said. If you have not subscribed, please do so right now. Thank you. Now, before we move on to the floor plans, the earlier on mentioned pros and cons of Nava Grove doesn't mean whether this is a good or bad investment. It still depends on the entry price, exit strategy, and most importantly, your investment horizon. If you wish to discuss more, this is my number. Now, coming to the site map, it's worth noting that all the units should have pretty sick views because the blocks are actually well spaced apart and, and even the neighbouring developments are not that near as well. So, whichever unit that you are getting, you most likely be getting pretty good views. But the premium block, I would think, will be the block 40 whereby you have view of the pool and also the block views of the Clementi Forest. Likewise, for block 42, you are also facing the forest. However, be prepared to get a bit of noise. Block 38 will be facing the facilities and also the driveway. And afterwards, I'll be sharing with you some of the units facing there, which 
can be quite interesting. All in all, I don't think there'll be lousy facing views, which is another plus point of Nava Grove. Now, let's go check out the floor plans. Now, first, let's talk about the two bedroom, one toilet over here. So, it's a conventional two bed, one bath layout with dumbbell placement, means one bedroom on one side, the master bedroom on the other side. Pros and cons about this layout is that when you are watching TV in the living room and your kids are sleeping, basically the TV sound will go straight in towards the door. La. So, better soundproofing will definitely help. But one thing good about this is the enclosable kitchen. Many of the two bedroom dumbbell layouts actually have a non enclosable kitchen which actually flanks the both sides of the walkway. But for this layout, it's well thought of for 624 square feet, they managed to give you an enclosable kitchen. So, well done on the developer. One thing worth noting is that this is quite an oversized two bedroom compact unit because, for example, if you go to certain development these days, 624 square feet can actually get you a two bedroom plus two bathroom layout already. However, during this development, it makes sense. Why? Because many of the people that are buying this development are actually staying in the private enclave whereby they actually enjoy very big rooms. Last time when I was doing Mayfair Gardens as the chief IC, one of the major roadblocks we get for the smaller unit is that the buyers over there are used to staying in landed. They prefer bigger units. And for this layout, certainly I'll be going for the facing. They are actually facing the driveway, which is stack 1 and stack 08. Why? Because it doesn't come with an unblocked greenery view. So most likely you won't be paying a lot of premium. And also you are situated further away from the main road and you get less noise. But all in all, not saying that I'll definitely go for 1 and 8. It also depends on the floor loading. If the floor loading for the units that's facing the greenery is not that much, right? You can also consider 24 and 17 from an investment standpoint. Oh yeah, speaking of premium loading for different views, I've also done a price matrix which I'll be sharing at the end so that you have a bit more clarity on what is the pricing to expect. Now, there are two types of two-bedroom premium units and the differences is very marginal. Let's first talk about PP1 where it comes with a 700 square feet two-bedroom unit with dumbbell layout and enclosable kitchen. I like the size of the master bedroom at 11 square meters and a nice balcony of 5 square meters for your alfresco dining. But one thing different between these two layouts will be the dining area. For the BP2 unit actually comes with a nicer floor plan with a 2.8 meter with dining area as well. So for those people that wish to have a slightly bigger dining table, you have an option of doing that. For the BP2, it also comes with pool view for both units as compared to the BP1 with only the facilities view which will be facing the conservation trees. And if you ask me right, which unit would I go for for the investment standpoint, I would likely be going for the ones that are not facing the pool because as usual, pool facing will usually come with a premium and when you're buying for investment for a quick exit, usually we just want to go for the one that is of a more palatable quantum. All in all, these two floor plans wouldn't make a significant difference so it all depends on the premium loading for the pool facing. Next, the two bedroom plus study unit which is the one that you see in the showroom. As you enter in on your left side will be the kitchen. Moving forward, the study is also on the left hand side and it's a 5 square meter study room which if you go to the showroom itself to look at it, the uh, size is pretty decent. One downside about the two bedrooms which is pretty common these days will be that all the toilets and even the kitchen doesn't come with natural ventilation. But these days with technology being so advanced, the mechanical ventilation sometimes does a better job at clearing the moisture away from the bathroom. And if you watch my video, two of my toilets in my home actually don't have natural ventilation. The rest have. In fact, the ones that are mechanically ventilated actually dry up much faster than those that are naturally ventilated. So all in all, I don't have a huge problem without having naturally ventilated bathrooms or even kitchens as well. So a dumbbell layout likewise and one thing interesting is that the study room also has access to the bathroom because just imagine if you see up the entrance to the bathroom from the study, right? How is the helper going to go into the toilet? without accessing your common bedroom. So this layout, I would think there's its limitation. However, based on the sheer fact that it's 5 square meter and for a 2 bedroom plus study, some of you may not even need a helper for a 700 over square feet unit. This could work. However, if you are looking for someone that has a live-in helper, and uses this as a helper's room, I wouldn't think it will work. Facing wise, nothing much to consider. Both are actually facing the facilities, so do expect a premium to be loaded on this. Now coming to the three bedroom units, it can be quite overwhelming because there are like a ton of different kind of layouts. So at first look, it looks like, oh my God, there's so many, but actually all of them are pretty much the same. So let's talk about the three bedroom compact first. There are 947 square feet and also 990 square feet. The major difference will be that the 947 square feet actually has a walkway into the kitchen. And at 947 square feet, it being in the middle stack, right? It doesn't have naturally ventilated kitchen nor bathroom. One interesting thing is that you can actually open up one of the walls to actually have access to the kitchen from the corridor. Coming to the three bedroom compact, there are two different kind of sizes. However, the 
major differences for the smaller three bedroom premium firstly is both are situated facing the facilities means to say that there should be a premium being placed on it on top of the fact that it's of a smaller quantum next all the bathrooms are mechanically ventilated and the kitchen doesn't have a window so may not be that good for people who are doing heavy cooking as compared to the 990 square feet unit i would think that the layout to some they may consider this more efficient last but not least for the three bedroom compact is of the newer dumbbell layouts and to some they may consider this more efficient and for the c2 three bedroom unit i would think that this is the more conventional layout with all the rooms tucked in one corner however there's a long walkway between all the rooms which some will think that is for more privacy good thing about this is that both the toilets and also the kitchens come with windows and last but not least is facing the driveway which I think that if the premium is right, I will likely be going for this instead of the smaller three bedroom compact. Last but not least, the C3 990 square feet unit. Not much difference, basically just a different orientation of the entryway. Next, my favorite three bedroom premium, 1098 square feet, very comfortable for own stay. There are CP1, CP2, CP3, and CP4. So before you get stressed, why so many differently else? Actually, they are the same. The only difference would be the placement of the AC latch and also the orientation of the entrance. So in terms of layout wise, I wouldn't think that there'll be a more superior layout than the other. However, if you want me to choose which is the set that I would likely be going for, I would think that CP2 will be the one that I'll be going for based on the sure fact that it's facing the south. So all in all, for the three bedroom premium units, the four layouts are pretty much the same. And one interesting thing is that there's only one block that can see the pool. The rest are actually facing more towards the outside. So 109 square feet, if the developer is not loading much premium onto this layout, I would think that this could potentially be better than the three bedroom compact that doesn't have mechanical ventilation but all in all still depend on the price and your budget now coming to the four bedroom unit types interesting thing is that it actually comes with a 3.4 meter living room with however the portrait layout actually provides some benefits as well because today most of the landscape layout cannot allow you to have like a six seater sofa area however for the portrait layout due to the fact that it has more depth in the living room you are able to have slightly wider sofa and a proper dining area because many of the landscape four bedroom units that i see not saying that it's not good most of them will mandatorily have to have their dining table outside in the balcony area which may not be a good thing for everyone so pros and cons you decide whether which one is good for you so in closing for the four bedroom there's one facing the pool there's one facing outwards so it all depends on your budget and also the price loading of the developer next the interesting unit will be the four bedroom dual key as we all know that these days dual key units are not that popular anymore however start of this year I actually helped my clients so their four bedroom dual key unit at water Bay for 900 over 1000 profit which they bought for 900 over K we sold it for about 1.8 million dollars so if you think that dual key units cannot buy think again it all really depends on the layout as well so for this layout I personally went to see that it's actually really very functional why because it comes with a very decent sized studio unit and without compromising the size of the living quarters of the actual owners depending on yourself if you wish to stay in the studio unit and rent out a bigger unit or vice versa both are actually pretty functional because the rooms are quite big screenshot if you wish to in order to save time but basically it's a three plus study on top of a studio unit so the studio unit should be able to get you about four thousand dollars and if you are buying this unit as an investment slash own say right it can help you cover quite a big chunk of the monthly installment only downside about this four bedroom dual key is that it doesn't have a helper's room it doesn't have a storeroom but it has a study which you can decide whether you want to make it a helper's room or a study room a storeroom or both now coming to the four bedroom premium plus private leave unit i think this one will be definitely suitable for own stay with a private leave means more space over there however it comes with the landscape layout which most of the four bedroom buyers are more used to these days you have a 3.8 meter with dining area so you can have the option of having a 2 meter or 2.2 meter dining table and still have sufficient walk area i like the dry kitchen over there because for drinkers or when the guys are having their parties you can just like reach backwards and you can reach out for your beer and wines and whatnot so there are two kinds of four bedroom premium private leave basically they both look about the same only the difference in the entryway and also the placement of the household shelter last but not least the richest neighbor in the block the five bedroom premium plus private leave looking at the floor plan is slightly larger 1722 square feet as compared to the four bedroom plus private leave at 1550 the major difference i can see over here will be on the right side of the floor plan bedroom number four which is nine square meter with a four square meter toilet which serves as the fourth bar 
staff room in the house which for those who have an extended family this could be a granny's room or even a guest room or even an entertainment room with an ensuite toilet so that's all for the floor plans which one is your favorite and which one do you have more questions let me know inside the comments now coming to the exit strategy it all boils down to the pricing and also the transformation around the area but first of all we want to talk about the price support over here compared with the resale and also compared with the new launch surrounding or maybe further away from us so if you look over here this is the price matrix pause if you wish to however i'm not saying that developer will be selling at this price this is just purely based on our estimates and if you look at the psf pricing we are looking at maybe the bigger units will start at about two three to two thousand four hundred over dollars per square foot and the smaller units will start at 2526 psf and looking at this for the two bedroom one bathroom unit at 1.591 million dollars are we able to find somebody to exit in future at 1.89 million dollars so nearby developments over there with a two bedroom plus one bath has already been transacted 1.7 or 1.8 million dollars so i think based on the sure fact that a neighboring new launch around us at this point in time already traded at a certain pricing so coming to the quantum right i've done this price matrix because i don't want to throw shit at five three you i think both are equally good developments i would think that it really boils down to what is the size and also the content they're looking for and the availability most importantly your balloting number why because all the prices that we have stated over here are mostly tested and proven by the neighboring pine tree hill residences and for the resale support likewise for pine tree hill before we forget all these are not being designed based on the latest gfa computation method meaning to say that whatever price psf that you see on this resale property and pine tree hill you need to add a five percent in order to normalize this psf pricing of nava growth for nava growth if you enter into something that's about two thousand four hundred dollars per square foot compared to the resale park suites which is further down the road at holland road area right across henry park primary school that is already trading about two thousand three hundred over dollars per square foot for the older resale property that without much amenities and not near any mrt station as well it's already selling at two three to two four so if you add a five percent premium to it you're actually paying about the same price for a brand new nava growth as compared to a resale park switch which will be about 10 years old by the time Nava Grove is being completed. And if we move further down District 21, you will find Daintree Residences, which is not exactly very, very near to the MRT station, has reasonable amount of amenities, like five to six minute walk NTUC, which most will likely be driving. Look at the resale PSF, it's already traded close to $2,200. Likewise, to add a 5% premium to normalize it to the latest GFA calculation, right? It's already traded, tested and proven 2,300 plus per square foot. If you're moving so much closer to town and within 1 km, to one elite school Harry Park Primary School paying just a premium of about $100 per square foot what could go wrong? So all in all in terms of exit strategy I wouldn't say that this is an underpriced or undervalued property however I would think that this is a safe buy especially if you're someone that's looking for own stay or have a slightly longer investment horizon. Now coming to my final thoughts on Nava Grove as long as you analyse the per floor loading pricing to make sure it makes sense do not overpay for the premium facing in this development and last but not least have 18 months of buy for your monthly installment to tie through difficult times. I think as long as you select the right unit in Nava Grove, it can still be profitable even though it's not near the MRT. And if you need any more advice, this is my number. Like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notification bell and I'll see you at my next week's video. Bye!